Hello everyone, welcome to this video. I'm the Flying Scotsman and um, we're going to be doing something a wee bit unorthodox for this channel because normally after the Flying Scotsman Christmas, I usually take a wee break from video making, uh, video creation between TFS Christmas and the first video of the new year because TFS Christmas is quite honestly it's very tiring. Um, I do try and get an early start on it, but um, I usually end up uh, working flat out uh, come the middle towards the end of December. And in fact, uh, this year, while I did start nice and early, I was still doing actual video creation and editing and production work on Christmas morning. So uh, that's something I would like to avoid in future. Anyway, um, no. What this video is, is a second December video. Now, as you may remember, I did do a December video already where we took a look at um, the Christmas card um, floppy disk, the, uh, the wee uh, greeting card thing towards the night before Christmas. And, um, you know, I, I called that my December video. But I thought that um, I would do something a wee bit more... J. A wee bit more The Flying Scotsman. And so, that's what we're going to do. Now, as some of you will know, I take a great interest in all things assistive technology. Um, I'm also aware that, uh, for the most part, MS-DOS was pretty inaccessible unless you were willing to pay through the nose for adaptive technologies that would make it accessible, of, of which there were plenty actually at the time. You had um, text-to-speech software like JAWS, uh, yes that existed back then. You had uh, the predecessor to Supernova which was um, a program called HAL and back then you didn't use your computer sound card for the text-to-speech. That was all handed off to an external um, speaker, um, an external uh, voice synthesizer uh, module speaker thing um, that would plug into, if I remember rightly, your computer's parallel port. And uh, that would uh, basically do all the text-to-speech stuff and it, um, it seemed only to work in uh, text mode because once you got into something like Microsoft Windows, the most you would get from it is if you put your... Um, your uh, any of your uh, keyboard locks on for example your caps number or scroll lock and um yeah that did used to tickle me at school when i would go on a talking computer and it'd be like caps on caps off um i mean i i remember years of c colon backslash greater than w i n return <laughs> anyway ms dos like i said for the most part was that had no assistive technology because it didn't have much of anything. Except I'm a dirty rotten liar. Um, from DOS version 6, I believe, it could be, uh, if, if not 6.22, you did get some very rudimentary options for accessibility. And this is something I've known a wee bit about, but um, I didn't know how developed they were. So... We're going to have a look at these options together. So in order to access um, these accessibility options, um, we're going to need to type a command, as is the case with most things in MS-DOS. And in this case, the command is ADOS. A-D-O-S. So this is ADOS, or, as we have now found out, Access DOS. Now, this seems to be quite um, a well developed uh, program. And what this does is it will give you access to various accessibility options that then were included in the um, accessibility control panel in Windows 95, and where some of the options, some of these options were then. Um, integrated into the accessibility wizard for on Windows 98 and of course a lot of them are still with us today 
But uh, these are quite simple. You, you'll get no magnification, you'll get no text-to-speech or anything like that here. These are basically just exceedingly simple options. So, um, so let's have a look. So with the file menu, you've got um, about access DOS. It's, um, you know, gives you um, information about, you know, who made the program and what have you. <laughs> You can save the settings, then you can install or run it. So basically that would um, give you a command that I'm guessing you would put into auto exec, which would uh, make MS-DOS accessible off of the bat. And then you can quit out of access DOS and just completely forget all of the settings that you have established. So now we get into the uh, interesting menu, the adjust menu. And as you'll see, we have um, quite a few options here. So let's have a look at the first one, sticky keys. So what is sticky keys? Sticky keys is, um, I believe, that is the option where you, if you need to press a um, <laughs> command that requires you to press um, two or more keys at once, for example, um, I don't know, in Windows it'd be Alt F4, in DOS it could be Control Alt Delete or um, something like that. Then what sticky keys will do is it, you need just press the keys in question, you know, press and release them like that, and it will then lock the keys on. So, I mean, essentially that's, that's what it does. It, it, you know, the key is sticking on. So if you can imagine kind of putting blue tack under your keycaps and then and then it's like you, the key when I go up on its own. So um, if we turn that on, sound print when pressing a sticky key. Um, so that would give you audible feedback through, I'm guessing the PC squeaker. Um, when you've pressed the key, Turn off when pressing two keys at once, so you can um, so you can uh, you know if you uh, you know if, if someone comes to the computer computer who is able to press uh, m uh, multiple keys simultaneously, it will turn that option off. Um, lock mod key when pressed twice. So if you needed to do. So if you needed to do multiple functions that required the control key to be pressed down, for example, if I had the control key twice, that would be it pressed down. I'm guessing you'd press it again to release it. Mod keys are shift, control and alternate keys. So that's what sticky keys does. Sure you want to install and run Access DOS? Yep. Okay. So Access DOS is now resident on my computer. Um, so I've just been able to use Control Alt Delete by pressing each key in um, one after the other rather than pressing them simultaneously. So that is what sticky keys does, and I could not think of another command uh, that would use multiple keys at the command line. <laughs> so you might be wondering, well, does this work in Windows? Well, let's find out. Right, I do apologize. This this is going to be kind of off the screen slightly, and I am having trouble with my Windows install. No, it does not appear to work in Windows. Anyway, is Sticky Keys even on? No, it's not. <laughs> uh. Oh, 
Oh yeah, Control C would be another example of a good command that you could use that's got multiple keys. <laughs> or Control X. Ah, oh, jings. Nope, does not work in Windows at all. So, I didn't think it would. We'll turn that off. Now, mouse keys. What you can do with mouse keys is you can use the um, number pad arrow keys to control the mouse. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that on. And hopefully... Okay, it's it doesn't seem to wanna. Maybe yeah, uh, maybe the keys are all different. Mouse keys. Um, can get F one for more help. Some users do not have the physical control to operate a mouse to get access to software which requires a mouse. Mouse keys provide a means to control the mouse cursor on the screen by using the numeric keypad on the keyboard. You can turn mouse keys on or off by simultaneously pressing the left alt key, the left shift key and the num lock key. Oh! And I can tell you for I can tell you um, that that is still um, a command that's in use today because I've just pressed that and it's um, it's turned on it's offered to turn on mouse keys on my main machine on the host. So um, stop that. When mouse keys turns on, you'll hear an up siren. If you are using only one finger, a mouth stick, or a head pointer, the easiest way to access mouse keys is to first activate sticky keys by tapping the shift key five times. Once mouse keys turns on, the numeric keypad becomes a mouse control pad. Each key on the keypad performs a different mouse function. These functions are, well, yeah. So that's what that should do, but it doesn't seem to want to work. So that's a bit of a shame that I'm not able to. So toggle keys essentially it's um, Again, I can... <laughs> Essentially, uh, I can uh, have toggle keys uh, switched on my Windows 10 computer. And what that will do is it'll make a sound if uh, one of the keys is turned, one of the lock keys is turned on. Very nice. Keyboard response. So... I can enable things like repeat key settings. So if you happen to, you know, suffer with uh, shaky hands or what have you, you can have your computer ignore repeated keystrokes. Um, slow key. Not sure what slow key does. Repeat keys. If the standard key repeat feature of your keyboard isn't too fast or you don't want it at all, repeat keys allows you to slow it down or turn it off. Slow keys, if you bump keys accidentally as you move around on the keyboard and would like to slow the keyboard down so that it would only accept keys after they have been held down for a while, slow keys will do this for you. That's pretty good. Bounce keys, if you have an ax a tremor and accidentally type keys twice as you press or release them, bounce keys can be used to make the computer ignore the extra key tap on this key. So that's what they do. Um, serial keys, some people cannot 
successfully use a standard keyboard, even with all of the adaptations and access DOS. Often, however, they will have special communication or control interfaces, which they can operate with proficiency. If they're using a communication or other interface aid, which has a serial part and has a programmable vocabulary, vocabulary they can use serial keys the serial keys feature to connect their aid to this computer and use their communication aid instead of the computer's keyboard mouse. So basically that supports, um, that basically adds in support for stuff like that. Got show sounds. So basically if, um, <clears throat> if your computer wants to make a sound, then um, it can make you a visual note or screen flash timeout so that would um, that would uh, turn access DOS off after a specific time could do with that on modern versions of Windows 10 I'm apt to forget to switch off the magnifier after I'm done using a computer I don't mean to and I know that's an annoying thing to do but uh, but yeah that I mean that is quite a useful feature and then, of course, miscellaneous, you've got space-saving keyboard. If you're using a space-saving keyboard, such as the one that comes with the IBM PS2 model to 25, or you, should, um, or you should set this option to yes so that access DOS will work properly with the keyboard. So I'm guessing that's uh, if you don't have a numerical keypad. So that is access DOS, and that's uh, the limited uh, set of tools it comes with. But the fact that they even bothered to put that in that is you know i mean that that was you know one of the first steps to making microsoft operating systems more accessible and you know what they do say a journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step so this video was made as part of the uh, dosember uh, event on youtube if you want to call it that now I am uh, one of a few people who has uh, taken part in the uh, DOS Sember series of YouTube videos. If um, if you want to have a look at um, all the other uh, videos and participants, uh, please search for the DOS Sember, that's uh, D-O-S-C-E-M-B-E-R hashtag on YouTube, and uh, you'll be able to see all of the different participants has been quite a few there's been v westlife um there's been adrian's digital basement there's been um tech chris one there's been and I'm, I'm wondering lgr i think lgr i'm not sure but um quite a few people have been taking part in it in it it's it's a lot like the uh, septandi uh, thing that uh, took that happened in september um but um, it's actually been quite fun to be able to do that in addition to the Flying Scotsman Christmas. And um, obviously in my last December video, I, I amalgamated the two. So um, yeah, if I'd, have, if, I'd have been using, um, if I'd have been using sticky videos, I could have done a TFS Christmas video, then a December video, and it would have uh, put the two together, right? Yeah, right? Anyone? Ah, forget it. Anyway. That, um, that is what uh, DOS Sember has been all about. So I'm now going to hand you over to my past self who's going to sign off of this video and um, let you all actually go and live your lives. I'd like to thank you all for watching this video and I hope you will all join me for uh, any video that um, I plan to make in 2021. I hope you all have a happy and safe Hogmanay and a hopefully a happy new year in 2021 it's it has been quite a year this year 2020 really um you know i, I know i've struggled and, and if it wasn't for us i i would have uh, probably be probably been in the loony bin right now if, if, i mean i probably should be but yeah but um it's been good to have Izzy's friendship and and support throughout the year so yeah anyway that's me finishing this video and uh, thank you all for watching. Judy bye.